What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we've got 11 legendary weapons you don't want to miss inside of Cyberpunk's new DLC Phantom Liberty. Now some of these, well precisely probably around 8 of them, are going to be a part of some of the gigs slash side quests and there will be a couple of spoilers with this as you'll need to choose certain dialogue options or make certain choices in order to get some of these legendary weapons. So. Just giving you a heads up beforehand, I've done my best to minimize the spoilers as much as possible. You will not have any spoilers from the main quest line within this. The only spoilers that will happen will be spoiling that of some of the side quests and gigs. But if you don't want any spoilers whatsoever, look down in the or pause the video here, I guess, and look down in the description below. I'll have a timestamp to each one of the weapons, the weapon type, what is uh, the gig or side quest that will be associated with getting that weapon. And that way you can kind of jump to that. I'll be showcasing the weapon first at the timestamp, then the location of it, then the choices of that. So if you don't want any spoilers at all, your best bet's gonna pause right here, go to that, find that Giger side quest, and then go to that in your game, save right there, go through it, experience it yourself through your choices. And if you don't end up getting that legendary weapon, you can come back, watch it and see what the options are that you need to choose from that previous save you made just to get that weapon. With that being said, we've got a lot of these weapons to cover, so let's jump straight into it. Now our first weapon is going to be the Pizdets, which is going to be a smart submachine gun that actually the longer you fire it, the greater it has for a crit chance. This is actually a really solid weapon for somebody that may be doing a Netrunner build that focuses on utilizing smart weapons in order to regain RAM back. This one is definitely deadly even without the uh, quick hacks on some of these enemies, but using this in tandem with your quick hacks is going to make it even more deadly. Now, the side quest that we'll be going on with this one is going to be something in the jungle. I forget the name of it right now, but we'll see it on screen. Yeah, spy in the jungle. You'll meet up with two Brazilian spies that are effectively looking for one of their own agents that went MIA while out here. They're doing this on their own outside of their agency, but Somewhere towards the end before you meet up with Banna, you'll have a little mini boss come into the room and we'll need to have a little bit of a toe-to-toe -to -toe, toe -to -toe fight with this one. And I would highly suggest using something like cripple movement on this, even if you're a part of a different build. This guy's pretty uh, squirrely and he'll be getting out of there pretty quickly, even after you get him down to almost half health, which effectively a lot of the bosses within, uh, I can't remember if this was the case, beforehand but it seems once you get to that little middle bar they do usually just blind you and try to run away but you'll have a couple of mechs come in here you'll have to kill them and once we finish him off we'll be able to get the piz debts from him now one thing to be noted is once you find banna not to spoil anything but if you let banna live after you find him in that room he'll actually give you a stash location where you can find another piece of gear that's going to be good for quick hacks as well as giving you another 10,000 in those eddies that you could find a little bit later on. So if you want a little bit extra after this, try to do your, or basically just let Banna live and get those coordinates and then take his little uh, lifeline thing back to wherever, or back to the other agents, goodness. But moving on, our next weapon is a massive heavy hitter and it's going to be the Deserter. This double barrel shotgun's packing quite a punch with it. Man, they've overfilled the powder in some of these shells. But I'll tell you right now, it's given a burn chance and it's given so much of a burn chance that it's definitely catching yourself on fire. But at the same time, it is packing over 600 damage per, sh <laughs> per shot and it, it's probably my favorite shotgun so far in the game. This is absolutely too much fun. I want to make a whole build around this when it comes to shotguns. It, it's going to constantly be pushing you to low health, but at that same time, it's going to give you more movement speed and damage mitigation. Now, where we're going to find this deserter shotgun is we're going to need to head over to the stacks. It'll be in the southern portion of Dogtown. You'll meet up with a woman by the name of, I cannot remember right now, there it is, Brianna. Now, with her, she's going to start talking about how her family and all these other people got killed. Effectively, we're going to have to go outside of Dogtown to hunt down a man that has basically slaughtered a good portion of the people over here in the stacks for apparently no good reason. Now, upon meeting with the man that has effectively slaughtered so many people in stacks, I mean, he clearly looks like he's been through quite an ordeal, but he doesn't seem to really care, but that's my opinion. Now, we're going to have to sit down and talk with him. You know, effectively, our orders were to kill this guy straight on and then bring back his dog tags. 
what we want to do is continuously have a conversation with him that avoids immediately shooting him dead until we get to the point where we have a dialogue option to put the barrel of the gun to his head. At that point, he'll give us the option to let him live and gain access to his stash that is in Dogtown. That is where we're going to actually get the deserter from. So in order to actually achieve getting this legendary weapon, we're going to need to make a deal with the, whatever his name was again, Ryder. I wasn't a big fan of this guy, but at the same time, if you really still want to kill this guy, all you got to do, put that gun up to him, get all the information, stand up after he's given you the information. Effectively, he's going to give you the code. That way you can lower your weapon here, you stand back up, grab the dog tags, and then still kill him, and you'll be able to get it done. But from that point, we'll be able to head back to Dogtown over to the southern portion just behind the stacks at this. It's actually right next to this uh, fast travel point. We'll see a couple of garages over here. And in this one over on our left, we've got one nine seven. Uh, I forget the last digit, but you might be able to actually pick this one up beforehand. If you wanted to, you may be able to actually just go over to this garage and input that code. I'm not 100% certain. If you want to try that and you're watching the video, you know, go and check it out. Head over to that fast travel point. We just got a little bit more footage of that uh, double barrel in action. God, it's, it's feeling like the Doom Super Shotgun. Maybe even cranked up a little bit. But now we're going to move on to the next weapon. Our next side quest is actually going to have the option of two different weapons. The first one I'm going to showcase is the Risket. This is the lesser one of the two, in my opinion. There'll be a choice within this side quest where effectively we can kill one person to get one of the weapons or kill the other for the other weapon. Risket is effectively one of those pistols that only works really well if you're at low health. Once you're at low health, every one of your shots is effectively going to crit. Now the damage on the weapon isn't the greatest. I'm not 100% certain whether or not you could even make a build around this to force yourself to low health in order to really capitalize on the unique attribute to this weapon and whether or not it'd even be worthwhile if you had a lot of critical strike damage on top of this. Maybe crit with headshot damage could possibly work, but I'm not a huge fan of this one as it does put you into a risky position where you're constantly at low health. and I'm not sure whether or not there would be a build out there where with certain skill points, along with certain cyberware, if you could maintain survivability at low health in order to ensure that critical strike damage consistently. As you'll notice in the gameplay footage, I do end up just uh, finding myself finally being able to achieve the, you know, consistent crit but maintaining that health at such a low level in order to get that done is pretty risky especially without a proper build running for it i'm not sure whether or not you could now the other weapon we can also get is old or old reliable now, old reliable is a little bit more reliable in my opinion as with this weapon, we're effectively, once we swap to this weapon, getting an increase to our headshot damage and effective range. And the further we are from a target, the greater the crit chance is going to be with this weapon. So if you're far away from a target and at the same time you just swap to the weapon, you can amplify your damage and amplify it even further by further increasing the possibility of a critical strike, which with headshots is going to be pretty devastating. This is quite... The better option, in my opinion, I don't know whether or not you can put a build together for the risk it, but in my opinion, all reliable is the weapon you want to go for within this mission. The side quest itself is going to be shot by both sides. Now, effectively, within this mission, trying my best not to just give away spoilers, if you want all reliable, you will kill the male figure or male agent at the end of this side quest. But if you want risk it, you will kill or allow the female reporter to be killed and then you'll get risk it that's uh, effectively how we're going to get this done but moving on to the next weapon we have the baby boomer now this one is definitely one that's going to be pretty strong for some melee players as each one of the consecutive hits with this baseball bat is going to further increase the crit chance this is one that also is a bit of a heavy hitter when i looked at the rest of my melee weapons this was the strongest out of all of them until i found one other one but this is also a very interesting side quest that you'll be getting this one with 
I really enjoy this baseball bat, though. I do want to make a full-on melee build with this one. You know, let me know down in the comments if you're looking to have any build guides come out there. I'll definitely be working on some of those in the future, especially for my Netrunner build. Still got to tweak a few things, but I'm quite interested to pop those in. But let me know down in the comments if you would like to see some content like that. And moving forward, the Baby Boomer is definitely one that you're going to have a lot of fun with when it comes to the melee build portion of it. Or just swinging that bat and basically turning people into home runs. But within this side quest line, we're going to be dealing a lot with this uh, Lena Melina. Now, it's going to be the name of the side quest is Dazed and Confused, and it's going to be all about brain dances. If you've seen anything with the uh, Lena Melina, apparently she's one of those brain dance stars. And effectively, what we're going to need to do is basically get her back to the brain dance studio. Now, in my run, I ran up to her location took out her squad and then effectively disposed of the evidence and then waited for her to return now upon her return i ended up having to spend 10,000 eddies in order for her to show up now i'm not sure whether or not there's another way to get her to show up without having to spend 10,000 but 10,000 is the guaranteed she's going to show up and you will sadly enough will or I only made 8,000 from the side quests, uh, but getting a legendary out of it, missing 2,000 of my eddies, isn't the worst thing. But at the very end of this side quest, you'll find the baseball bat as she leaves it at the Brain Dance Studio for the quest line right next to the front door, and that's how you'll be able to achieve this uh, baby boomer baseball bat. Now, later on, she'll also text you about another gift that she left you, which will actually be her t-shirt, so if you're interested in that, you know, later on, you'll get a a text message from her showcasing that. Now our next weapon is going to be the Crime Stopper. This is going to be a pretty unique smart pistol right here as with each round we have the chance to disable the cyber limbs of the enemy that we're affecting. Effectively this is going to give us the opportunity to immobilize the target and have them take increased critical strike damage or just increasing our overall critical strike damage against that target that's affected by this disable. Now this is perfect for net runners. Even if you're not focusing on a smart weapon build, this weapon is going to be pretty effective at not only dishing out some strong damage, but in those moments when you're possibly not using your mono wire or you're down on RAM, this would be a great one to utilize in order to get some of that RAM back or just use at a distance in order to get some of those targets picked off. Now this gig is going to be just next to the hearts underneath the monolith that's in the center of that uh, roundabout we'll go under there talk with this guy and then our main focus is going to shake down a lawyer in the hearts building itself now mr hands is effectively the number one person or he's the only person we're really getting all these gigs and side quests from and the hearts building is basically his main hub so he wants you to be as discreet as possible now the easiest way I found to get into the VIP area, as you may be confused on how to get this done, I've basically done a little mini guide that's full stealth getting into the back of this. On the left side of the bar, there's a kitchen that we'll be able to walk into and then go up the staircase into the VIP area. You don't necessarily have to kill this guy. I did it just because I thought I was going to need to do that, but there's more than a few of these enemies that will literally be able to just walk right past. They're kind of just stocking things on the shelves. Could have just disabled that camera and walked on by just like this guy on our right not even going to notice us as long as you are crouched and moving a little bit slowly you'll be able to walk right by him disable those cameras and then there's a guy behind the bar on our right we'll need to distract him using the tv just behind him and then we'll be able to make our way to the vip room four over here on our left so we'll distract the guy behind the bar with the tv head into the room this guy will basically give us the information that the lawyer is in room six instead of the room four so we'll come out distract the guy behind the bar with the tv hit or take control of the camera on our left distract the enemies with uh, the vending machine on the right and i guess the ac on the left and in this room we'll find ourselves a, a nice you know it's it's a great Great graphic, but going forward on the other side of the room, we're going to have to distract this guy with the light in front of him. That way we can get up behind him, grab him, and then be able to stuff him in this uh, little bin over here. But the guy in the next room will actually just be able to grab him, kill him, and drop him to the floor with no worries. And in front of him, we need to basically overload this wall over here with this, uh, I guess, little terminal over there. 
But inside of this room, we'll be able to find the Crime Stopper within the lawyer's bag over here on the left and just behind us is the room where we'll find the lawyer and be able to interrogate her. Up next, we have the Volkadov, I believe that's how you say it. Effectively, a fire machete. Now, this machete has the chance to burn enemies, and once they are affected by this burn, apparently you can switch to another weapon and start shooting them for infinite crits. And the more enemies you have burning, the more crit damage you'll have, but the less accuracy. Not sure how effective that may be to utilize, but it's a pretty interesting machete, and if you want something that's like a pyro machete, this is definitely one to go for. Now, within this side quest, we'll also get a second weapon, which is going to be the Roscoe, which is an interesting hand cannon, as if you shoot any enemy in the leg and then in the head, apparently they will just topple over, and any time that an enemy is laying on the ground, you'll guaranteed a or guaranteed crit on headshots while they're laying on the ground. Now, trying to get them to topple over with smaller enemies, they seem to just immediately topple over as soon as you shoot them in the knee. It's not hard, but you'll notice with some of these bigger boy enemies, I'm not sure whether or not these guys were just blocking my shots to the head so they didn't go down, but effectively, the, the better portion of it is any time that these guys are just laying on the ground, you can get that instant critical strike damage against the head and it makes it pretty easy it's a pretty decent handgun i wouldn't say it's the worst it's an interesting tactic to use with this legendary weapon i don't know if i'd make a build out of it but be interesting now the location of this side quest is just going to be outside the dogtown gates you'll notice a woman sitting in her car laying in her car as she just doesn't want to be seen and we'll lay back with her and effectively we'll need to save two people inside of a building just across the street now once we get to a point in the mission where we've got this room right here where he almost drops the can on the ground and then we've got two enemies to kill right here just behind us after killing those enemies is a crate that you could very easily miss I almost missed this myself and it's got the Volkadov inside of it as well as another cyberware tier 5 inside of it just add to that at the very end of the mission we'll have to face off with uh, Dodger who's the main protagonist in this and once we kill him if we side with the two people that we came in to effectively save, we have to say that they're not lying and then get into a fight with this guy and then we'll get the, the Roscoe. Now moving on to the next weapon, which is probably my favorite weapon out of this entire list. This is going to be the, uh, I, I don't even know how to say it. It's a guy or something. Man. It is a, it is a hatchet. <laughs> That is electrified and it is absolutely amazing. You can throw this hatchet. I want to make an entire build around throwing weapons with this. I absolutely love this thing. Now, uh, you know, there is going to be a few irritating moments when you miss where you have to go and run and grab it or wait for that little red bar underneath to uh, complete its little cooldown for it to come back. But it is so satisfying in most of these moments when you throw this thing and whenever it crits, it pulses or it lets out an electric pulse and it hits everything with a crit with that one and i mean it's absolutely devastating now where we'll find this is in the eastern portion of dogtown there'll be an increased criminal activity over here and effectively this is just going to be one of those little like mini boss zones and there'll be three of these where we'll get a legendary at each one of these but within this one we'll get it from the io io zarin once we finish her off, we'll be able to get that. Uh, I, yeah, I'm telling you, I just don't know how to pronounce that one. But moving on from that, we've got our next weapon. That's going to be the Sparky sniper rifle that with headshots is going to emit electrical charges. This thing can be quite devastating if you were looking for a sniper build, and especially one that can clear out close enemies that are all next to each other. Or if you're going for like a stealth build that wants to just eliminate large amounts of enemies that are clustered together. This is going to be that one. Now, the location for this increased criminal activity is going to be in the southern portion of Dogtown, right across from the area that we actually got Baron or, or the, what was it, the Spy in the Jungle mission. Right across from that building is where we're going to find this compound, and inside here in the cash room is where we're going to find the Sparky. Now, these are going to run pretty quick. I'm trying to just make sure that you just don't get any spoilers out of these since they're pretty straightforward but the next and last weapon we're going to get is the raiju which is going to be a pretty interesting tech submachine gun now with this weapon 
It's going to effectively be able to penetrate surfaces without needing to charge the weapon, but if you do charge the weapon and it ends up becoming fully auto, doesn't take long, it's extremely accurate, and the look of this gun is quite nice. I really enjoy this. It's probably the best looking one to me besides the, uh, goodness, I don't remember the name of it, but that little hatchet. But effectively, with this weapon, we'll also get increased critical strike damage, or was it crit chance with headshot? Yes, it is increased critical strike chance with headshots. Now, this is also going to be one of those weapons that's very easy to shoot from the hip as well. It's going to be a burst fire, and then it's only going to be full auto when you've charged it up. But this is definitely a tech weapon, I'd say, is good for tech builds. I haven't really played around with it just yet, but I'd, I'd make an argument that it's going to be one of those weapons you'd want to slot in. Now, this is going to be our last increased criminal activity zone just over into the western portion or northwestern portion of Dogtown, right outside your apartment. If you come out of your apartment and then go to the right, you really can't miss it. It's just right there. But inside of the stash room, and this is where we're going to find the Raiju. And guys, that's going to be the last of the 11 weapons or 11 legendary weapons you can get out of the gigs and side quests and increased criminal activity. Now, not sure if there's going to be some more that pop out a little bit later. I'll make some different videos later on if there's more that I find. I know there's definitely more legendary weapons to be found from the choices that you make in the main quest line. But effectively, I've only finished out one ending with the main quest line. And then I just went and just pretty much did every side quest and every gig that I possibly could. And now not all of these side quests and gigs are going to give you a legendary weapon. But these right here will that are inside of this video. Some of them do have some interesting background stories and, you know, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see some videos that are possibly build guides coming around some of these weapons. If not some of these weapons specifically, if you'd like to see some builds for those, let me know down in the comments. And if you'd like to see possibly some content where it showcases the multiple choices that you could possibly have between the main quest line or possibly some of these side quests in question, if not some of the other ones going for a little bit of a deeper dive on it. And just explaining it out but if you've enjoyed some of this content or if it's helped you out at all hit that subscribe button and if you'd like to see some of this content live hit that link down in the description below follow me over at twitch we may not always be on cyberpunk but we've got more than a plethora of different games to be running through at the later portion of this year we've got a whole slew of different weapons coming in the next month it's going to be a wild ride it's a lot of things it's a pretty great year for gaming honestly but let me know down in the comments below if you've enjoyed this, if any of these weapons you've found, possibly some different choices you've made in some of these side quests as well. I'd love to see that at the same time. You know, do uh, try to make sure that it's as, as spoiler free as possible. But if there's any funny moments that you've had, definitely let me know down in the comments below. I'm sure other people will have a good laugh at it at the same time. But on that note, hopefully you've enjoyed and have a good one.